Welcome back, everybody. It's been a long time. I was out sick for a couple of days, but I'm back. Today, we're going to talk about X Infinity and Star Sharks. My name is Silas Prime. I'm from Unix Gaming. Let's jump into it. So, everybody, let's start with X Infinity. They have some announcement. We're going to dip in also the origin update news. Like they were a couple of days ago. But uh, for those who didn't catch them or didn't read about them, we're going to do a walkthrough. But before we come to that, they announced build a program. The first projects are approved. And there's actually, I think, a total of 12 that were approved. We're going to show you a few of them and what are they actually about. And there's more to come. They say they're going to introduce more and more. And they have also some guidelines if somebody wants to join the Builder program. So let's check out the sub stack that they posted. The first project, accepted, right? Don't stop building, guys. Don't stop building. And basically, it goes on and on and on. And I want to show you the first project that it is. Increase your chances if you want to join. And here's a small guideline that I already mentioned. Make real progress. Share progress with the community. It's always important to share the progress with the community. Get the input because these are the people who's going to play it, who's going to use it, and you need that. Form the right team of your, around you for the project. 100%. I wanted to say 100%. 100%. Because if you have the right people that you can actually you know, rely on, they will bring up new ideas, you will certainly make it. Like The right people is always a big, big factor. Show a history of building. Yes. You should have some kind of history. There's so many different other projects out there that you could have built on or can start already building on, prepare a portfolio for it. So how about you start already doing it? And then be a great Lonashian. Of course, it should be one of the main features. Anyways, if you want to apply, here's a link. We will put it also, of course, in the description down below. So make sure to check it out. Here are some projects. We're going to walk through a few of them. We have uh, Into the Dungeon. Into the Dungeon is a, is a push-your-luck dungeon crawl that will provide the standards for sharing style, prestige, and identify by showcasing how to exchange resources between games. There's also some cool, you know, artworks and much, much more. Down there, there's two actually that I'm actually currently very, very curious about. Um, then we have Defender of the National Land. It's a survival game, basically. As you can see it, actually, we can play that video quickly here. You play... And it is, for those who maybe know the game, it's called Vampire Survivors. It is a survival game. It auto-shoots. You collect coins. You level up. Whenever you level up, you can choose a new ability or skill, right, or weapon. And you can, like, build on that. Build on that. It is, like, almost an endless dungeon, mostly. And in Vampire Hunters, you have an end boss. It is death itself. And then you can go on, unlock new characters that have other abilities, and so on. And I really hope they're going that route. But it is literally Vampire Survivors, if you think about it. And I like, I personally love that game. Exit to the Moon, it reminds us all of an old school game. Yeah, you cannot go wrong with this one. Easy. You don't need to do anything. You just go left and right, up and down. You know, you evade and get the levels and so on. Then we scroll on Hungry Axie. And basically, Axie are hungry. They will eat each other based on their types. The more, more the Axie eats, the bigger it gets. The more points it gets, the more SLP it gets. The last three Axies standing there are the winners. It's kind of a Battle Royale thing, if you think about it. Axiology, Lunation Cup, it's like a race game, for example. Same here. <clears throat> then I have uh, Axie Pop. Axie Pop is a game about popping Axies. Drag and swap uh, to get a minimum of three lines. Candy Crush, guys, basically. Then X Infinity War, uh, Brawler, Mac Infinity. This is what I look like. This is a Battle Royale, actually, itself. This is also what I'm looking for. What it looks good. It really, really looks nice. I like the color scheme and everything. If you, you check that out, I'm really, really curious about it. And then uh, Across Lunasia. Basically, Across Lunasia is a pixel art platforming adventure you can embark upon with your Axie. Play for free if you own an Axie. And I'm a huge fan of platforms, right? If you go way, way, way back, you know, the Metrovanias, Castlevania, Metroid, and so on, platformers on that person, on their own rights. And I really, really, I'm looking forward to see what they're going to bring to the table when it comes to this genre. And there's more things. Support the builders, lead the builder program. And as well, um, on the website that we have it, on playtoearn.net, you have one more time a smaller breakdown about the builder program, who got accepted, and what are they going to get? A minimum of $10,000 grant in the AXS to go towards that project. 
Support from SkyMavis engineering, game design, and product team. Access to, access to incentivize their game using the X-Infinity intellectual property with no limit, which is actually a pretty, pretty good and damn good deal, to be honest. Exclusive access to tech integration, such as Ronin single sign-on and Ronin wallet transactions. Promotions of their project by SkyMavis to the community. And I think there's going to come much, much more things. So basically, I'm really looking forward to this builder project. And I'm looking forward for, to the gameplay, to the land gameplay. And of course, the full release of Axie Origin. And if we talk about Axie Origin, let's check also the, the latest update that came out. So if we check out the latest update, there's a few things that they did. It's kind of actually funny. And I will come to the funny part. Uh, first of all, the balancing in the U UI improvements, we are, you have the links. We will put it, of course, for you in the description down below. In arena mode, player that go first will once again have three energy, which is a good thing, but are now unable to use attack cards on the first turn. I don't know what to think about this, to be honest. Like, we really need to see how it's going to play out, how big of an advantage this uh, disadvantage or advantage, advantage it is, actually. And yeah. I'm really, really, I don't know what to say about this right now. We will, go, of course, revisit it as soon as we get more data. That's the only thing I can say. Uh, then they all added a QR login code. Also, you can log in via QR code now. Uh, when uh, challenging another player, the player who sends the challenging request will always go first, which is actually a good thing. If you think about it, you create a tournament and whatsoever. You can choose who's going to go first. You can do then switch sides. It gives more how could I say, more dynamic to the game, right, itself. Spectating a game will now have a four-turn delay to any spectators. It's a good thing because it's not stream typing and so on. And if you compare it to League of Legends, like if you spectate a friend, I think there's a three-minute delay. So all in all, good thing. Now, there, was, uh, there were a lot of improvements and bug fixes. We'll not go through all of them, but let's just touch base on a few. Charms will no longer work if equipped with a non-compatible cards. Yes, this is how it should be, right? Endless Anger, Rune no longer grants rage to dead axes. And this is a funny one. How can I be enraged if I'm dead? So, yeah, thank you for fixing that. Draw card effects will now draw the card before dealing damage, removing the infinite draw card exploit. That was a biggie, I'm telling you guys. Like, it's a... No. <laughs> Using a zero energy draw card effect will now correctly end turn when the turn timer is up. They're fixing the cards, they're fixing the interactions and so on, the infinite card drawing thing, for example. And there's much, much more. For mobile itself, stage icons in the adventure mode now scale their position properly. Change the you don't have an account yet, pop out to insert your name when you log in uh, to the account for the first time. Fix the bug where Chimera was causing the game to crash. There was a lot of these bugs. Literally, when you play a card, when you do something, it crashes the game, which meant if it, at the end, it is very, very bad. And thank you, thank you, Axie. Thank you, Sky Mavis, for fixing this. And hopefully soon and not too long in the future, we will have Axie Origin full release. Now, the last part I really want to touch base on is, of course, the price of SLP and AXS. SLP... We can say it's stable for now. That's it. Because I'm currently on the one-year chart. So if you go to the one day, it's not moving at all. That's it. The worst here, and basically the, what I checked, it was the announcement of the builder program, right? Who got it? That is what happened on that day. I don't have a, a particular, you know, I don't see a particular other reason why the price went up. I really need to do more investigation. We'll, of course, do. And the same goes also for AXS. Like, it literally, if you think about it, let's check out the last seven days. On the 31st, it went up to almost $28. Now it's back to 20 So these are things that we are looking forward to, you know, investigate more. And we will do. And make sure to check out our next X Infinity video that will come up very, very soon. Next up, Star Sharks. Man, oh man, Star Sharks. You guys, you know, we talk about Star Sharks a lot on this channel because, first of all, we like this game. But it is currently, for me personally, on a downwards trajectory, to be honest. And uh, why? We covered it in the previous video. Make sure to check it out. What is currently going on? Because they removed their adventure mode, so the only way to earn C token 
is through Arena, which is okay. Let's say X Infinity, whatever, good. But then <clears throat> if you have a one star shock team, you have 10 energy and you cannot play more than 10 times per day because they're not allowing you once you used all of your energy to continue playing to grind the MMR. The other thing is, if, you, if you're good actually at the game, but I have only one star shock team, once you reach, let's say 1,400 MMR and you go above, you will start meeting two star shock, three star shock teams, which at the end you don't have a chance against. You have a chance if it's a really absolute beginner or he is, if he's AFK, AFK, sorry. Because even though, and let's say you both, team, both sides, like the one star shock and the three star shock team have the exact same shock with the exact same cards, they don't have the exact same stats. The three star shock has more HP, more morale, more speed, more everything. And you have three of them against three one star shock. Do the math, guys. Literally, the game in my opinion, currently, is pay to win. I just get, can go inside right now, buy myself a team of six star sharks, not three of them, and basically with a little bit of game knowledge, and if you played Axie Infinity, it is easy transferable, you can get really high in the MMR. Like, really. On top of that, easy, you know, getting additional C tokens because you have more energy. Because the one star shark have what, 10, and a six star shock has 40. So all in all, I don't like that current state of the game. There's so many ways that you can actually, you know, change that. Either go the, way, the route that each star has its own leaderboard or bracket, like the one star shock, two star shock, three star shock, and so on. Or make it so that it doesn't matter what kind of star you have, you have approximately the same stats and that you have maybe more energy that that is the difference so i don't know how they're going to tackle this i really really hope they're going to balance it out because right now it is not balanced at all so hopefully they're going to do something about it anyways next up that i want to talk about it actually what i wanted to talk about today is they had an announcement on the twitter and it is about details about the update in the next official version shockies come and take a look release time June 1st at UTC, midnight UTC. Now, what it is about, it is just basically detail of the update. Like I mentioned, 1st of June, there will be two changes to the user center, profit sharing function for, the ch for channels, which is a good thing, and bulk operations transfer, sale, and purchase for in-game shock NFTs. Makes everything easier, more accessible, all good. Then when it comes to the in-game itself, Change the shock energy cost per battle for different ranking points range. This is what I just literally said about it. It is already, let's say, the right direction, but we are not there yet. Not with, this is not enough, my personal opinion. And then card selection time shortened to 15 seconds. They want to speed it up, make it more challenging, which is a good thing. I talked in a previous video also about the reset, though, which is a good and a, it's like a double-edged sword. Let's put it like that, because investing just you know, 100 uh, C token to reset your, your sharks and to get the, the perfect one is too easy. So what they actually did, they in, in implemented an additional item, or they had, there's an additional item actually, and it's called the skill retention, right? To be able to do, to keep one card of your shark and then reset the other three, you need to have these bottles here. And then there is actually a guide on a Medium article that they posted a few days ago. We will, of course, put it in the description down below, which tells you if you want to keep a dominant gene, like the card with the dominant gene, and for example, you have a four-star shark, you need to pay three uh, points. One bottle is 0 0.12 BMB, which is, with the current price, 36.5, so almost $37. So if you want... To reset a four-star one, you'll pay over hundred dollars to keep one skill. Then you go to the marketplace and you find yourself sharks with ten dollars. This is when I uh, when I mean when I say you need to balance it out. Doesn't make sense. Again, I really really hope this project gets back on the track, gets to its former glory, two dollar C token, right? And when I did just talk about that, we can also check the token currently. Currently, the C token is a little bit above two cents. And there's no much movement in the past, even a month, if you think about it. 
this is how it looks like. It literally started here and actually way before, but now. All the changes, I'm really, you know, they want to do the changes to the game. Yes, that's a good thing. But what kind of changes are you doing? What are you looking for? Are you looking for that this is a really awesome game, people that they want to play and earn on top of that, not to play to earn. It's a big difference, guys. So please talk to yourself, stand in front of the mirror, and hopefully we get to the next level. That's it for today's video, guys. X Infinity and Star Sharks. Both projects that you know I like, but currently I don't. I promise you, I will give you more honest opinions about these games and not only these, every game out there that we're gonna play and research. I'm a gamer and I see it from a different perspective. If you want to know more about Unix Gaming, make sure to check out the so socials, YouTube, Twitch, we're streaming live on Twitch, and of course, Twitter and so on. All the links that we talked about in this video will be in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you get notified whenever we go live or post new content. My name is Silas Prime. I'm from Unix Gaming, and I see you in the next one.